Across cultures and countries, one in three young people experiences peer victimization at school, including being teased in a mean way, called names, being physically harmed or excluded from activities. Longer term, this can put young people at risk of mental health problems like anxiety and depression. Certain groups of teenagers are more likely to be the targets for negative peer behaviors, such as those with developmental language disorders or DLD. This is a type of neurodivergence which creates challenges with communication, understanding and using language. I am Dr. Senziana Ioana Onchoyu from the Department of Experimental Psychology at the University of Oxford. In collaboration with researchers here and at University College London and King's College London, we want to understand why adolescents with developmental language disorder experience more peer victimization than teenagers without these language difficulties. This association may occur because language is important for building relationship and sustaining social interaction. However, for teenagers with DLD, poor language skills may contribute to misunderstanding or rapidly forgetting what has been said or lead to difficulties with negotiations and problem solving. The association between language disorders and peer victimization may also be influenced by common causes such as genetics and environmental characteristics. For instance, it is well documented that language disorders run in families. Although an environmental experience, victimization is associated with factors that are genetically influenced, such as mental health problems or risk-taking behaviors. However, these factors, as well as the risk of language difficulties, can be influenced by environmental characteristics such as growing up in socially disadvantaged areas. But the link between DLD and peer victimization has not yet been studied when genetic and environmental factors are considered as common causes. We used data from the Twins Early Development Study, or TEDS, to better understand the role of these common causes in the association between language disorders and victimization. TEDS has tracked the lives of twins born in England and Wales between 1994 and 1996. At age 11, 3,400 pairs of twins completed online tests to assess language abilities and at age 11, 14 and 16, twins reported any experience of peer victimization. The data showed that 11-year-old twins with developmental language disorder were more likely to experience peer victimization at ages 11, 14 and 16 than peers without DLD. The ideal scenario to test if teenagers with language disorders are at increased risk of bullying would be to have one person in two parallel universes. In one universe, they have DLD. In the other, they do not. We could then measure their experience of peer victimization in each universe, with DLD being the only difference. However, this scenario is impossible. So we turn to identical twins who share 100% of their genes and are brought up in the same environment to create the closest test. We investigated whether genetically identical twins experienced the same level of peer victimization when only one of the twins had a language disorder. While TED's data only provides a snapshot of the overall population, the data showed no link between DLD and peer victimization in twins, meaning that all the factors that identical twins share, both genetic and environmental, can influence DLD and peer victimization separately. Developmental language disorder is a lifelong condition, with 7% of the 5 to 6 years olds in the UK being affected by DLD. Understanding the factors underlying the association between language disorder and peer victimization is important for creating supportive environments to help young people navigate social relationships.